And hey, when you count down to zero, am I talking, or at what point am I talking? So, we're about to, we're about to start, so you just... I'm ready. He's gonna cue, I'm gonna count down with my fingers, you're just looking at camera, because it could go... I just wanna know when to start. Delayed, so it could happen at any point in 10 seconds. Okay. I have a Oh, we're live? Okay. We're live, live? Live. Live, live. Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman. Coming to you again here on Traeger Kitchen Live, deep in the heart of Texas. You guys are in my backyard. Yes, this is an outdoor kitchen. It might look like I'm indoors, but we're actually in my backyard at my house uh, for the second time here uh, during our, our uh, quarantine. Uh, today, we're coming to you to teach you a pretty legendary Texas half chicken. Um, I'll talk to you more about that in a little bit. Uh, we're gonna pair it with uh, Mexican street corn or AKA elotes, which is extremely popular here in Texas. Uh, we're going to use my friend Tim Hollingsworth recipe and I'm going to put a little spin uh, of my own on it from uh, stuff that we do here in Texas so it should be a ton of fun. But the crazy thing is I got invited to do this uh, just on the eve, almost the eve of Traeger Day. So this Saturday, uh, if you don't know, is the famous Traeger Day celebration. It's a day where we all come together to celebrate the Traeger community where we go out and we cook amazing food, we put it on social media, uh, we use the trash, uh, the hashtag Traeger Day, and just have a lot of fun. So, last year was a blast. Uh, I know we can't all be together this year, but hey, we're doing a virtual cooking class here. Uh, we did this a few weeks ago with brisket, and it was a smashing success. We had a ton of fun. So, when they called me and said, "Hey, could you do the one right before Traeger Day?" Obviously, I could not say no. So, a little more about Traeger Day that I'm pumped for. There is an Instagram live at 12 Eastern, so that's 11 Central. 10 Mountain, I think, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a lot of really cool guests confirmed and lined up. I'm going to be on there, uh, but there's way cooler guests than me. So my buddy Thomas Rhett, uh, he's going to be on. You guys may know Ken Griffey Jr., obviously huge Traeger guy. He's confirmed he's going to be on. Dan Patrick, uh, Dan Patrick, huge supporter of the Traeger brand. He's going to be on and a whole lot more. I don't want to spoil all the fun. Uh, so you guys be sure to tune in to the Instagram Live on Saturday at 12 Eastern ton of fun come on there and talk to me and lots of other cooler people than me so anyway with that said let's talk about you know what we're gonna do today let's get a little drink I rewatched myself last time and I was a little parched so taking care of that this time so what are we doing today we're doing what I'm calling a Texas half chicken you know chicken is the thing that there's a ton of ways to cook but let me cut right to the chase on what we're gonna do and why we're gonna do it this way. So this recipe that is on the Traeger app, you guys have to go on, pull up my phone here, and I'm sure you all have the Traeger app by now. The brand new Traeger app is a ton of fun, just released not too long ago. And in this app, you know, you guys can search for all sorts of amazing recipes. I tell people all the time, you gotta have this app because they get, you know, killer content delivered to it all the time. Right there, I'm on the front page, smoked brisket with Matt Pittman. Anyway, you can follow today's recipes on the app uh, or you can grab them on TraegerGrills.com. Uh, so let's get into kind of what we're going to do. Uh, and while you're on your phone, go to Instagram and follow Meat Church. If you don't follow Meat Church, you're probably the only person in the country that barbecues or grills and is not following Meat Church. So anyway, do that as well. Back to the chicken. In Texas, if you compete in barbecue in an IBCA competition, you have to turn in a half of a chicken. So what I'm going to show you today was born out of uh, a method that I used to cook chicken in competition back when I used to compete. Things have evolved and changed over time in a lot of different ways, but the techniques that I'm going to show you um, can really be applied to lots of chicken. Like if you compete in KCBS, a lot of guys cook chicken thighs, some people cook lollipops, and they're going to apply similar methods to what I'm going to show you. I promise you that this is going to be some of the best tasting chicken you've ever had. Back to the comment I made earlier. People cook chicken a lot of ways. If it's wings, some people love low and slow smoked wings, 225, 250. You know, the skin's not real crispy, but you get a lot of smoke flavor and they taste really good. I've got recipes on meatchurch.com that I'm cooking wings at 450 degrees. So really hot, super quick, trying to get that crisp. Or maybe you like to uh, smoke your wings on your Traeger and then you like to fry them. You know, I don't know. There's lots of different ways to do it. Same thing can be said of a chicken half. Uh, what I'm going to walk you through today is we're basically going to take a whole chicken, we're going to brine it, we're going to take it out of the brine, 
and I'm going to teach you to carve that chicken to make half chickens. You can make it into a spatchcock chicken, or we're going to take it a step further and actually separate them. That's a huge key point I think you guys are going to love. And we're going to cook two half chickens. A whole chicken is the cheapest way to buy chicken. So you can go spend five bucks, six bucks to buy this chicken and have an amazing meal or two meals or whatever for your family. So I highly recommend it. Uh, we're going to cook it on the Traeger with pecan pellets today. We'll talk about that here in a bit. We're going to actually cook it in a really nice butter bath, which adds a ton of flavor. And that's the key that I think you guys are going to take this, and it's going to set this thing next level, and you're going to love it. We're going to finish it off with a glaze. Uh, we're going to use Traeger Q's barbecue sauce, and I'm going to, I'm going to make a couple tweaks to it, which stay tuned. I'm going to show you that. Uh, I'm going to add some, uh, some pepper jelly out of a real jelly. So you, you know, and I'll teach you how to kind of make it your own. We're going to have a beautiful chicken. It's going to be the juiciest, best tasting chicken you've ever had. And then we're going to finish it with our pairing of our side, which we've grilled uh, some corn here. So we've grilled some whole corn uh, at 450 degrees. And you guys can see the nice color and char we've got on it. This stuff's ready to rock. We're going to let it hang out over here. And then we're going to put together a mixture that we're going to add to the corn uh, to serve there at the end. And I'm going to be taking your questions along the way. So you guys fire your questions away in the comments. Like you might be wondering like, hey, Matt, it's quarantine. Your hair is looking like really good. So like, where did you get your quarantine cut? Um, you might be asking like what kind of knife you're using. I don't know. Ask away. I am going to take lessons learned from my brisket class. And I'm going to try to answer questions. I'm going to try to get ahead of you and answer questions that I think you're going to have like last time million questions about where did you get your butcher block this is a rosewood block uh, from my buddy Tyler so you can hit him up at Tyler at rosewoodblock.com get your own gorgeous block uh, but I'm gonna do that throughout this every tool I use like this is a this is a Yeti Rambler whatever I'm gonna tell you what I'm using I'm not plugging anything I'm just letting you know in case you have a question any questions you have put them in the comments um, I've got friends aka Robinson barbecue here that's gonna be asking me questions as we go and then let me also mention there's going to be a recap about an hour after you're going to hop over to Instagram live me and my buddy Chad Ward are going to you know catch up for 15 20 minutes uh, and we're going to you know we're going to recap everything we did you know you guys can fire away more questions there that's a lot of fun have a cocktail relax um, so we'll see you over there I'll remind you of that again at the end it's time to get started okay I said we're going to start with the whole chicken I have a uh, skipped ahead a little bit and actually brined a chicken but let's talk about that first with any any barbecue that you're making any protein you know you've got to think about here's the raw meat all the way to the final product and i think of that as a road map and i think you know if i'm driving from la to new york uh which direction do i want to go and, and how do i want to take it well, i kind of take three steps when i'm doing this number one at the base layer do i inject or do i brine that protein secondly um, how do I season it? Which is really where I think the big directional shift comes in on the meat. You know, your seasoning and how much you season with really sets the massive direction of that meat. You know, if you season with a bold barbecue rub versus like a lemon pepper, that obviously makes like a, a really big difference. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And lastly, you know, you can sauce or glaze that protein, which is, I'm just trying to accent what I'm doing. I, I refer to that as the sprinkles on the cupcake. You know, I don't want sauce to so today we're doing three things. We're brining, we're seasoning, and then we're saucing or glazing. So we're keeping all that in mind at every step. First thing, we're going to brine. We're going to use our birdbath brine. So let's talk about why you brine. I brine to impart moisture in my meat. I'm not trying to change the flavor profile. Uh, you can if you want. Uh, my brine is really straightforward. There's, a, there's salt in it, there's sugar in it, um, there's spices in it. But, you know, you're, you're not going to take this and be like, oh, I'm like totally blown away by what you're flavoring it with. This is really about imparting moisture into the meat. So what we've done is you're going to take directions are on here if you use my brine or you can make your own. Uh, one cup of this mixed a half a gallon of water well, or half a gallon of liquid. I actually made one gallon, so I used two cups of this. So I took two cups, which is almost the entire package, and I actually used chicken stock because I wanted to impart more, you know, chicken flavor into the chicken so we went one gallon of chicken stock and uh, again two cups of my birdbath brine 
it's best to kind of put that in a saucepan and heat it up. So think of, think of making like tea and just stir it up and let the ingredients dissolve and then completely cool that brine mixture off. Put it in the fridge, whatever you want to do, before you put your chicken in it. And that's where we're going to start. Okay, I'm bringing in a disposable cutting board here to put on top of my uh, wooden block, which is what I'm going to finish the food on to prevent, you know, cross contamination. Dealing with chicken is the one thing that I'm I'm uh, probably most particular about in the kitchen. Put some gloves on. The uh, question is, can you dry brine? You can. I don't ever dry brine chicken. I prefer a wet brine. So I dry brine other things, but I don't like to dry brine chicken personally. But I do know people like to do that, especially around the holidays. Uh, people love to dry brine pol uh, turkeys uh, for Thanksgiving. So great method. That it's just not what I'm showing you today. I'm going to kind of let this dry off. I'll tell you what you want to do after you pull a chicken out of the brine you want to rinse it off completely, otherwise it'll be too salty and you want to pat it dry. Because I don't want to leave the shot and go wash it and come back, I'm just going to go with this, but you would normally rinse it off. So let's talk about this brine. We mix it up as I indicated in a saucepan, cooled it off, put it in this clear uh, food safe container. Um, we submerge the chicken in it and put it in my refrigerator. We've brined this chicken for about six hours. How long do you brine is really up to you. Some people like to brine overnight. I don't like to go longer than that. I think if you go longer than that, uh, the chicken becomes too salty, but that's something you're gonna wanna play with. We've basically brined it today. So that's, that's kind of where we're at with this. And I think it'll be really juicy, but again, you know, a lot of times I like to brine overnight and cook it for lunch the next day. All right. Well, here's the whole chicken. Well, I mentioned buying a whole chicken is the cheapest way to buy chicken. This is about a four pound bird. It's not real huge. This is an all natural chicken uh, that I buy at my local grocery store. So technically there's nothing too fancy about it. It is all natural, but it's, uh, it's really good. Uh, this is actually the chicken that I used to compete with. Uh, this is a chicken um, from our uh, local HEB, uh, really good. So we're going with it. I'm gonna pat it dry, even though I didn't rinse it off. Again, very important, please be sure you rinse it off so it's not too salty. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up here just a bit. All right, here's the tools of the trade for me. I like to use uh, what I call chicken shears. These are, these are kitchen shears is what they are. Uh, this is a set of Messermeister kitchen shears. You can use whatever you want, but the reason I like these is uh, they can actually come apart. And when they come apart, you can take them apart and you can put them in your dishwasher when you're done. Don't be using your kitchen scissors that are in the top utility drawer where your kids got their crayons and you got your tape and your wife's got her coupons or whatever, those nasty old scissors. Get yourself real scissors, keep them in your knife roll away from the family so these are only used for food and nothing else. These aren't that expensive, they serve great purpose, and that's what we're gonna use to actually uh, cut this chicken up. So I'm gonna turn it over, because again, we're making half chicken, so I need to, I need to uh, cut, this, cut this in half. I'm turning it over to the, to the back where you see the backbone, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna use these scissors to cut this chicken's backbone out. You can do this with a knife, but it's much easier with a pair of these scissors. All I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to make an incision and stop. All I'm going to do is, is make an incision here. I'm going to follow that all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. That simple. It's actually really easy except for one section right here. We have to put a little pressure like right here. Other than that, you should just be able to cut right through. Again, right along that backbone. Is that brine meat church? What's it called? The question is, is that brine meat church? Uh, that Yes, that is meat church bird bath brine our number one product come holiday season. I'm repeating the process on the left side of the backbone just to remove it. Yes. 
Okay, so the, I'm going to get asked where do you get it. You can go to meatchurch.com and you can find all of our retail outlets that are close to you uh, around the country or you can order directly from the website and that's where you'll get it. All right, I'm pulling out the backbone here. Um, I don't like to waste things. Like this would be great to make chicken stock, but we're not here to make soup today. So we won't be doing anything with that. Now I'm going to put a little pressure on this just to kind of crack it open just a little bit. Let me turn this around so you guys can see it. All right, here's what we're left with. This thing's cracked open. Some people will stop at this point so they can cook their chicken like this, and they call this a spatchcock chicken. A trash can just magically appeared underneath me. You can do that if you want. It's fine to stop at this point. I like to go a step further to make what we're calling half chicken, and people love this step, so I'm going to show you. So I'm going to take my chef knife, Messermeister 8-inch chef knife, and I'm going to make just a slight incision. So when I make this incision, there's going to be a natural stop. I know it's tough for you to see, but when I take this knife, I start to cut it, stop just like that. I went probably a centimeter down, and I stopped right on top of the bone. That's all I was trying to do. Now I can apply pressure and crack this open a little bit. Look at this. So you've got that breastbone popping right out. Bam. Now you can take your fingers, and you can run right alongside, and you can expose that because I want to pull that out. So see how it's sticking up there? And I'm just using my fingers to kind of work the meat off the side. And then I want you to take your hand, grab both sides, and I simply want you to pull it out. Can you do the same method with a turkey? You can 100% do the same method with a turkey. In fact, I have a video on Meat Church YouTube that uh, probably is our most viewed video, and that's exactly what this is. And there, here's why. Pretend this was a turkey. And I would stop at that point. Now when you cook your turkey, flat like this on your Traeger, it cooks more evenly because this breast meat is down closer to the grate. It's not sitting way up high like this. So your bird cooks a lot more evenly. And when you're done, you can take the large cut meat spatula, you can slide underneath it, and you can put it on a platter, and you can garnish around it, and this serves very beautifully. Again, you could stop. What we're teaching today, you could actually stop this right here. This bone cut in half, broken half, I mean, that happens a lot, not a big deal. But as you see, it came out completely clean, so we're golden. Can you save that brine and use it for something else? Can you save the brine and use it for something else? Like you've had raw chicken in it, so I, I toss it. That's, that's what I do. Now we're back on this side. Meet up, because I just want to cut it in half. You could do this either way. I'm kind of laying it like this so that you guys can see. Um, you guys can see the chicken. Look, it's May in Texas, so the, these, I've got really smart flies here. Like, they know what I'm doing. They know what goes on at the meat church. So if you see some flies around here, don't sweat it. All right, sharp knife, make an incision, make quick work of this chicken. Bam, there we have two halves. Just like that. Can you marinate barbecue chicken overnight? Question, do I, can I marinate barbecue chicken overnight? So any, so I'll say this about marinades or brines. The longer you leave it in, the stronger it is, obviously. And here's what you gotta keep in mind. I love to marinate meats. I love to marinate chicken, like your Tuesday night chicken breast. If you leave it in too long, you know, it's gonna be like whatever, like say you're using barbecue sauce, then that chicken's gonna be like really barbecuey. Can you leave it overnight? Sure, especially during the week. I, I do that sort of thing a lot, but just keep in mind what you're marinating in. Are you using like a, a Italian dressing or something kind of light? Uh, if you're using something heavy, you might not want to go as long. It's common for me to teach ch or to cook chicken for my family, and it be, you know, in the past I could have marinated it too long, and so it's just overpowering. So you might only want to go a couple hours with your marinade. You, chicken doesn't need a lot. What do you look for in chicken? Are there different grades like beef? The question is, what do I look for in chicken? Uh, are there different grades like yeah. beef? You know, so there's not a select choice prime or anything like that, but I mentioned that this was an all-natural chicken, and um, I like that, you know, so, uh, and I know the farm that ultimately this stuff comes from, uh, but I generally consider chicken kind of a commodity chicken. I mean, there's certain ones that are better than others. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you can get at your grocery store, but there's not grades. I mean, this isn't like a Wagyu chicken or anything like that. Okay, next, the last thing I'm going to do from a trim perspective is if there's anything excess, uh, I'm going to trim that off, and you can see there's, it, this isn't a huge deal, but uh, I'm going to cut a little bit of this fat off right here because it's just a little much. I'm going to tuck the skin underneath when I cook it. Uh, so if there's just like big, like right here, this huge gloppy fat, that's, that's not going to do us any good. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. And, you know, that's really about it. Uh, you could cut this excess skin off if you want, but look, I grew up in the south, and chicken skin's better than the dang chicken, so I'm leaving this excess skin. I mean, I was a kid that went to Long John Silver's and just asked for a bucket of the crispy stuff like you could keep the fish, so I'm keeping all this skin. All right, we're in good shape. Next step. Here's another tip, something that I like to do uh, before we get into seasoning this chicken. So now you've got your chicken halves, right? Most people will just season both sides, throw it on the grill. That's fine, but I'm going to go a step further. So I'm going to take the chicken right here, and I'm going to separate the skin from the meat. So I'm going to take my hand, and I'm going to work it underneath the skin. Be careful. I don't want you to pop a hole in the skin. I mean, it's okay if you do, but I'm, I'm simply working my hand underneath the skin. And why is that? I mean, it's like I'm taking the clothes off the chicken. And here I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm to go kind of far with it. Look, I have complete, other than the wing, I've completely exposed all of the meat. The same thing with this one. Just be careful. Take your finger, barely pop the little membrane. Easy. This is actually kind of fun. Rewarding, satisfying, whatever. We peel it off. So we've just taken the clothes off the chicken. Why'd I do that? That was easy and because I'm gonna season the meat. I wanna season that chicken. So think about this, anytime you have chicken, when you're, when you're barbecuing chicken, uh, you're not frying chicken, the skin, like I said earlier, is not gonna be you know, amazingly crispy because we're not cooking at a high temp. Therefore, when you go to either cut this or depending how you butcher it at the end or, or trim it at the end, whatever, carve it, uh, when you go to cut it, there's a high likelihood that that skin could actually come off the chicken. And if that happens, if you only season the skin, then you know, you're not going to get that seasoned bite. So I'm going to season three places. I'm going to season underneath the chicken, I'm going to season the meat, and then I'm going to put the clothes back on and I'm going to season the skin. That's good to know because now I need to think how much seasoning do I want to put on it and I don't want to overpower it. For now, I'm tucking it back over and I'm going to flip over to the uh, meat side so that I can season, so I can season that side. Okay, I'm going to take this nasty glove off. Actually, I'm going to take both gloves off. Where do you find those gloves? So I'm using, I'm using nitrile gloves uh, that, I mean, you can get on Amazon. I mean, it's just a nitrile glove, so there's nothing special about it. And I do a lot of cooking videos, and it's funny. If I go no hands, I get hammered. If I wear gloves, I get hammered from, you know, you can't play with chicken, so I'm going to wear gloves when I do chicken. Actually, before. Where can you find those disposable cutting boards? Where can I you find these disposable cutting boards? Look online. Uh, we carry these in our brick and mortar store here in Waxahachie, Texas, but uh, Smoky Mountain cutting boards, I think, out of Tennessee. They're great for hunting, tailgating. They're, I mean, I use them all the time because they end up, you know, they're not expensive. You can buy them individually or buy a case of them. It's like one of the greatest inventions ever. What's in that cup? What's in this cup? TX Bourbon. You've got a lot of options on seasoning, and I'm going to tell you this before I jump in. The recipe in the app or TraegerGrills.com uh, says to use our Holy Gospel, which is an amazing rub on poultry. But what I love is our holy voodoo. Here's a little tip I'm going to show you. When you're messing with poultry and you're doing a class and you got people watching, this is how you keep a bottle clean. Cover it up. It's not good for marketing, but it's good for sanitary reasons. And all right, remember, I'm seasoning three sides. So I'm going to go, you know, average application on the back. I always tell people I season a foot and a half high so that it's nice and even. If I had more time, I would let this sit in it here for, you know, 10 minutes, but I don't want to make y'all wait 10 minutes. So we'll just kind of pat it a couple times, and I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and jump to the next step. Will I be able to watch this later? Will you be able to watch this later? Yes. This lives on, you know, on all these platforms that it's live on. Like, if you're watching on Facebook, this will be posted, and this, and this stays out there. So 
the brisket video we did, it had legs and went for, you know, several days after, or I mean, it's still going. I'm still getting questions off of it. So, yeah, these posts will still be out there. I believe it's on YouTube, also on, uh, on Twitter, and I'm not sure what other platforms are going with today. All right, I'm peeling the skin back, and I'm going to season the meat. Not too heavy, because think about this. Normally, you're just seasoning the skin, but I'm going to season the meat and the skin, so I'm going about half what I normally would. And I want it to be nice and even, so just a little bit. You know, I own seasoning company, so I like to think that I know about how much seasoning goes on here from, from all our different trials. And, and you're seeing the meat that we cook when we make new rubs. Uh, anytime we make a new rub, we, we test with chicken because it's such a blank canvas and works really well. I'd normally give this a few minutes. Um, the Holy Voodoo, by the way, is more of a savory forward rub. But it has a hint of sweet, but it has a little back end jalapeno. Don't be scared by it. It's going to cook down and have an amazing flavor. Uh, this is our number one rub right now. It's just super, super good on chicken. It's the best wing rub of all time uh, by Matt Pittman. I, I called it that. All right, we're going to pull this skin all the way down, tuck it back over. And the good news is we didn't pop it or anything. This skin's pretty long. We can tuck it under. If, what you can do is you can take a toothpick and you can, put a you can add a couple toothpicks in here to hold the skin on if you feel like you need to, if it was too short. Why would you do that? Keeps it from pulling back in the cook process. Uh, so now I can grab this ball again. I got a dirty glove. No big deal. I'm not touching the bottle. Seasoning up pie again. I want to get inside this wing, outside this wing. Nice and even application. question is do I use a binder okay so on certain meats I do today we're not um, I just don't think it needs it Th this chicken came out of the brine I did pat it dry but you guys see how easily this adhered if you want to use a binder would be like an olive oil uh, on pork meats things like that people use mustard things of that nature uh, I don't think it needs it but if you want to use one you know you certainly can um, it just in this case you know this stuff is going to adhere if I walked away for 10 minutes I'd come back this chicken's gonna be completely wet. That's the seasoning pulling the moisture out of the skin, but that means it's gonna be completely adhered. But even on you know this one here that has just been sitting for a few minutes, if I if I pat it a couple times just to encourage it, go to pick it up, and as you can see, not much fell off of it. I've kind of messed up my paint job by doing that, but that's okay. Can you apply butter between the meat and the skin? Can you apply butter between the meat and the skin? Absolutely. I need that butter. I need and a half pan. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna set this up. But we're gonna let it sit here for just a few minutes as we get ready uh, to put it in the pan. Grain fed and free range chickens. Uh, opinions on grain fed versus free range. So this was a free range chicken. You know, I don't know what the lifestyle is like of a chicken that sits in a cage. Like, is that like you're living in an apartment versus having a house in the backyard? I don't know. Um, but I went with, again, all natural. It was free range. My butter's coming in here. Pony Express. Thank you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cook these in a half steam pan. You could put these directly on the grate, but if you do that, you can't have this amazing butter effect that I'm going to show you. I'm going to lay this in the pan. It's okay to just set it right on here because we're going to throw this away in just a second. All right, so we've taken a stick of unsalted European butter. And I've already sliced it up in just to what, you know, what I'm gonna call a pat. And I want you to just place these pats all around this pan. What pellets are you using today? What pellets are we using today? So today we're using pecan. Why pecan? I like a lighter smoke wood for poultry, or not too heavy. And I always give this heaviness of wood lesson. Heavy smoke woods, oak, mesquite, Texas beef, a little less smoky hickory, which is like my favorite all purpose. Hickory would be great for this cook. Less smoky than that, pecan. Less smoky than pecan would be fruit woods. So poultry, 
fish are very sensitive. Uh, so I want to go with one that's not too overpowering. So I, I think pecan's good. You can see pecan bags back here. Uh, that's what's going in the Timberline 1300. And we're good to go. We got a full stick of butter in here. I know what some people are thinking because I get asked this. Okay, I'm trying to be healthy. Like, could I not use butter? Could I use olive oil? I got no idea. I'm not here to help you lose weight, right? This is not, I did a full Ironman. Nobody but me and my family thought that was cool. Nobody's trying to be the best at exercise. I want to live and eat good and be happy. So this stuff tastes good and that's what we're going with. You can tune into a health channel if you're trying to lose some weight. Can you use this method just for thighs? Could you use this method for thighs? Yes. In fact, my friend Scott Killebrew refuses to eat white meat. He will only eat thighs. Amen. That's where all the flavor is. If you can, I mentioned earlier, if you compete in KCBS competition, I think most people cook thighs. And they'll take thighs and they'll line these pans with thighs and they'll put butter all around it. So this is very common in competition all over uh, to cook with a lot of butter. Salt and butter are your friends in competition barbecue. Uh, I don't compete a lot anymore. I compete in the big ones, but I mainly like to do stuff like this and have a good time and share my passion for barbecue instead of sitting in a parking lot with 500 other drunk dudes trying to get a plastic trophy. So this is just a lot more rewarding. So here we are. We're good to go. This is adhered and we're throwing this on the grill. So let's talk about our setup. My favorite grill, the Timberline 1300, a beast of beasts. This was actually the first 1300, the first D2 1300 in the country. So I was told. Uh, so it's rocking at 275 degrees. Let's talk temperature. You got, you got variables, um, people are going to be like, why 275? All my barbecue recipes are at 275. I'm trying to be consistent, easy, straightforward, not a ton of ingredients. I want to show you the most straightforward way to make amazing barbecue. 275 is a high enough temperature that will speed up my cook to you know, allow me to not spend all day in front of the grill and I can spend the rest of the time with my family. Um, you could change it. You can drop down to 250. You could go as low as 225. I don't like to cook poultry at 225. I think the skin's too rubbery. You certainly could go hotter than 275. You go 300, 325. When you go hotter, the skin's gonna draw back quick. It's still gonna taste good. It's gonna cook quicker. Uh, so cook it what you like and just know those variables going into it. All right, we're opening up the Traeger. I've got my top two grates out so that you guys can see this. I'm gonna put that right there on the grate. And then big time tool we're going to use today is we're going to use the Traeger silicone basting brush because that butter is going to melt. And as that butter melts, I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to baste that chicken with that butter three, four times throughout the cook. This cook is probably going to take ballpark, depending on the size of your chicken, about 90 minutes at 275, somewhere around there. Plan for two hours, uh, should be a little bit less. Let me shut this. Again, depends on the size of your chicken and what you're cooking at. You might be buying a much bigger chicken that's going to take longer, um, but I always try to give myself plenty of time, so I'm going to say it's two hours, maybe done quicker. If it is, you can certainly hold chicken for a while. So anyway, we're going to base with this here in just a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of the nest. So good thing about this disposable cutting board, now it's gone and I've got this nice clean rosewood block here, so I'll get rid of that. Should I cook at a higher temp since I live in a colder climate? And look, now we've got a clean bottle that I can touch with my hand. Question is, should I cook at a higher temp because I live at a higher altitude? No, colder. Oh, colder climate. climate. I don't cook, no, all right, so question, you know, should I cook at a higher temp because I'm in a colder climate? I don't change my methods no matter where I'm at in the country and I don't change my flavor profiles no matter where I'm at in the country if I'm competing. You, I always say dance with the girl that got you there. A Traeger runs really efficiently if you're in a colder climate, it's just gonna burn more fuel. If it's like freezing cold outside, first off, you should probably move to Texas. Secondly, you could get like a insulated blanket if you want, I don't know. But no, I, do, I would not cook hotter because you're at a colder climate. I would consider moving. Nobody's got time for snow. You go visit the snow and then you come back here. Okay. Would maple pellets be good for their chef? Would maple pellets be good? Maple pellets would be amazing. I love pancake syrup on my chicken. I'm kidding. No, maple would be good. Fruit woods would be good. Great choice. What internal temp are we looking for? What internal temp are we looking for? This chicken, I said, it's probably going to take 90 minutes. Obviously, we're not going to be here 90 minutes, so I've got one that's already cooked to get to the next step. Uh, but we're looking for chicken. The guidelines on chicken is it's done at 165 degrees internal temperature. I will tell you that most professionals don't take it that far. But you want to use... Um, 
instant read thermometer that has been stolen from me. So I use, uh, I use a Thermapin NK4 instant read thermometer to check my temp. This reads in two to three seconds. Um, I'll show you, we'll, we'll reference this back. We'll check it a couple times as the butter melts. You know, I don't go more than 160. Anytime you pull meat off, it's gonna carry over cook another two, three, four, five degrees. Um, I think, you know, you definitely don't want to take it past 165. It's going to dry out quick. That's why this is such a good friend of yours and such an ally. But I'm going to go, you know, probably 158 or so. But we'll, we'll kind of reference that as, as we go through. But now I want to make a sauce. Um, and then we're going to sauce a chicken that I've already cooked uh, that's sitting at about, you know, 150. Well, we cooked it to about 155 degrees. So for now, I thought I'd put together a sauce for you guys. Um, that I like, and then uh, we'll sauce that chicken and we'll, and we'll make the corn. Where can I buy your voodoo rub? Where can you buy our voodoo rub? Meatchurch.com for direct orders, or there's a dealer locator. Uh, we're in somewhere around a thousand retail outlets around the country, especially Traeger partners. I mean, every day I'm getting a new Traeger dealer uh, because you guys are going in the store saying we want this. Um, our rubs, by the way, uh, they're small batch craft. They're blended every week. Anything that you get off meatchurch.com is never more than one week old. That's why it's so fresh like this. Not many people can tout that. Uh, so we really stand behind our stuff. Uh, small family business and, you know, thank all the support we've had this year. It's already been an unbelievable year. Clearly everyone is staying home and cooking during the pandemic. Sauce. So I've got a little cast iron bowl so that I can make my sauce in the Traeger. I'm going to use uh, Traeger Cube. I'm gonna change it a little bit. You can, um, you know, so two of my favorite sauces, Traeger Q and uh, Sweet and Heat. I like to change sauces up a little bit when it comes to chicken. I wanna turn a sauce into what I call a glaze and I'll get into that. So we're gonna add two things to it. Again, to be clear, not that it needs it. You can just sauce with this and be good. So make this your own. Use your favorite sauce. Make these adjustments I'm, I'm gonna make or not. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put three ingredients in my sauce. I'm gonna use my sauce and I'm going to cut it a little bit with a local honey, and then I'm gonna add a buddy of mine, Eric Wisham's uh, pepper jelly to it. And again, you can make this your own. You can take your favorite sauce. Why do I add honey? Honey will thin out a sauce. I said it, it cuts it, but I think that's a drug term, so I probably should have said it. You know, it thins it out. It'll make it more of a glaze. So I'll show you, when, when you pour a barbecue sauce, I pour a little bit, you know, this one isn't necessarily thick, but when I add, when I add honey to it, I'm, gonna, I'm really gonna thin that thing out just a little bit and it's gonna make it run more clear. Um, this is Burleson's Texas uh, wildflower honey, Burleson family, made here in Waxhatchee, Texas. Really good friends of mine. It would help if it's open. Ooh, look at that, got another one. Would injecting the chicken enhance the flavor? I'll answer that in just a second. So this is about two to one, maybe a little less. This is probably, th this sauce isn't real thick, so I'm probably going about three to one Traeger Q to honey. And then I'm going to add a pepper jelly. Why do you do this? Optional. So this is blazing blueberry pepper jelly. So we're going to have a blueberry Traeger Q chicken. And don't be scared by this because it's good. So the key to this is it's a pepper jelly. You could use any pepper jelly. So I, I equate it, and this is made in Georgia, by the way, small batch. I would equate this to going to farmer's market when there's no quarantine. And little old lady's got a bunch of jelly and you buy whatever pepper jelly you want, a mango pepper jelly, a jalapeno pepper jelly, whatever. And anyway, I'm just gonna put a couple, honestly like a couple spoonfuls in it. This is a little spoon, so I did three. And we're gonna mix that up and, and heat it up and mix it up some more, let it meld together. Whew. That's blueberry, but it's got a kick. I guess I can't stir with that now. All right, I'll stir with the other end. So I'm gonna put this in the Traeger so that that jelly will melt down. Oh, that's stout. Basting brush, I've got another one over here that I was already using. Um, now that I've got the grill open, I might as well show you how I like to baste because you can see this butter's melted. By the way, the butter is a European butter. So it was European unsalted butter. So it's a good butter. Don't be buying cheap butter. You can afford to buy a Traeger. You can afford to not skimp on butter. But what I'm going to do is I'm not actually touching the chicken. I'm just, I'm just touching this butter and I'm basting it. Now tell me that buttery goodness isn't going to taste amazing on that chicken. 
and I'm going to try to baste every bit of it. So I'm not brushing it because I don't want to brush the seasoning off. I just want this butter to run down the chicken. And you do this as much as you want, but I'm definitely going to do it three times in the cook. So the question is what kind of cast iron is this? This is a Lodge cast iron bowl. I like Lodge because it's American made. It's made in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my home state. Love American made cast iron. I mean, basically you're gonna buy one and it's gonna last your entire lifetime. All right, so that chicken is, look how pretty that is. We're gonna let that keep going. I'm gonna come back and stir this in a minute. I skipped a question. What was it? question was would an injection enhance the flavor of the chicken all right so I talked to you about you know the three steps of what you can do with the protein the first was injector brine then season then sauce we elected to brine you certainly could inject and brine or inject or brine we sell an injection we sell a chicken injection I don't normally inject for my family what I call in the backyard um, I normally just um, I normally brine but you're, you certainly can inject if you want to. Uh, if you compete, you're probably definitely injecting. Uh, but at home, I, you're gonna see, I think this is gonna be, well, you're gonna take my word for it, but this is gonna be a juicy chicken, I hope, with this method, so I think you'll like it. Have you ever done chicken halves at 180? Have I ever done chicken halves at 180? No, never that low. I just think it's just too rubbery, basically. All right, now I need to handle something that's kind of hot. Um, so I'm gonna put on a cotton glove first. And I'm gonna... The butter, was, the butter was unsalted butter. It was unsalted European butter. What European, Irish, a good butter. Flugra, Kerrygold. Um, I actually bought something that's local. So now I got a hot glove. So with the cotton and the nitro glove, I can actually grab that hot cast iron if I want to. Keeps you from buying a, a heat glove. All right, so I've got a chicken that I've already cooked. I'm gonna get that out. Where can you find those heat gloves that you're wearing? The question is where could I find these heat gloves? I'll be back. I actually made a sauce in advance as well uh, so that we wouldn't have to wait on that. Uh, these cotton gloves you can get wherever. I sell them in my brick and mortar store, but you can get them at Harbor Freight, hardware stores. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon. Here's an example of one that I put toothpicks in because the skin was coming back. I'm going to go ahead and pull those out at this step. So let me tell you, you don't want to take a bite of that. Okay, these chickens were cooked to 155, 100, right around there. So, uh, and they've probably gotten up in the 160 range. They've been sitting in my warmer. So here's what I'm gonna do. This sauce that I've made, same sauce that's cooking in the Traeger, I made one that's still warm. I just pulled it out of my warmer. And I'm gonna drizzle this on. So, that, so you can see the, I don't know, viscosity of this. It's pretty thin, that's what I'm trying to show you here. And I, I, I don't like to brush it on because I don't wanna leave brush marks, so I'm, I'm drizzling. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but listen, you eat with your eyes first, so I want it to be really pretty. Not to mention I'm putting it on Instagram with 350,000 followers and I don't need the trolls telling me that my chicken doesn't look pretty. How do you keep the skin from getting rubbery? How do you keep the skin from getting rubbery? You know, it's not gonna be real rubbery at this temperature, uh, you know, but the higher temperature you cook it, the less rubbery it is. I mean, I said that earlier, you know, I have to talk to my wife about that. She's like, oh, that chicken's not that crispy. I'm like, well, I didn't fry it. So the higher you cook it, uh, you know, the less rubbery it is. So there's, you know, you got to find the balance in there. Like how low and slow do you want to go to impart smoke versus how high do you want to go, um, you know, to get it crispy. But another thing I like to do is I like to let my chicken sit out in the refrigerator overnight, uh, which will help dry the skin out and help increase the, you know, the crispiness of it. So that's a good tip. Any concern with the loss of smoke flavor when using an aluminum pan? Any concern with the loss of smoke flavor when using an aluminum pan? You're still getting, I mean, you're not getting the smoke underneath, but I can tell you that people compete with this like all the time and it's a barbecue competition. So 
Uh, you know, clearly if you just laid the chicken on the grate, it probably would get more smoke because smoke would be coming up underneath the meat onto the uh, meat on the bone side. But I mean, this is unreal. I, so poultry takes on smoke really well anyway. Uh, so it's not as if you're cooking like a big heavy beef or something like that. So it, I think it's okay. So this is taking me a minute, but that's okay. It's, it's going to look really pretty. You know, what we're going to do is we're going to set this back in the Traeger for about 10 minutes to let it lock on or tack up. Uh, the purpose of that is, is so that this sauce is nice and it glistens and uh, locks on. And, you know, I don't want you to pick up this chicken and, and um, have the barbecue sauce like run down your face while, while, you're, while you're eating it. So that's why we're going this route. I'm almost done. If you wanted to hurry up, you could brush it. You're like, hey, I don't care what it looks like. It's me and my family. My seven-year-old isn't going to say anything about brush marks. Knock yourself out. Nothing wrong with that. I'm a little particular, so I'm just telling you why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Final touches of my paint job. And any excess should just kind of run right off because you're going to put it back in this hot grill. I hope. Okay. Looking pretty good. All right. Where can I get that lid hat? This hat? Where can I get this hat? Well, that's a good question. Put these back in the Traeger real quick. A lot of people are asking how long you fry that chicken. Too. Okay. So let's talk about the wardrobe. It's important. The Eat Barbecue Meat Church t-shirt. It's like very fitting it's very soft it's very comfortable 22 dollars no it's a large i don't look like a barbecue man i got to work on my figure um this is uh i'm gonna tell you this is a comfortable shirt all right meatchurch.com meat church river hat uh could also be used on the lake uh, i mean it's amazing i'm not gonna lie also meatchurch.com very limited quantities good question what was the next question remind people how long how long did I brine the chicken? I brine that chicken for six hours. I normally brine it overnight. So I like to go at least, you know, six hours up to like half a day. I think beyond that is a little salty for me, but just go to, you know, your liking. You're doing your best Bob Ross on that chicken. I was doing my best Bob Ross on that chicken. I'm telling you, eat with your eyes first. Where's that cutting board? I'll get it, I'll get it. All right, while that sauce is on, I want that sauce to sit on, you know, 10 minutes or so. I'm going to get another little cutting board out, and I'm going to work on this corn. Can you dip the chicken in the sauce? Good question. Can you dip the chicken in the sauce? Absolutely. The only thing with that is that it's going to take a little more sauce than you'd like to make. But in competition, we do like to dunk our chicken so it's nice and clean, you know, so... Um, you can, but you've got to make a lot more sauce. So you see how little sauce I made? So that's the only reason I couldn't dunk that, because I didn't make that much. OK, we're going we're gonna to put our elotes together uh, while, we, while that glazes, and then we're going to eat, which is like my favorite part. Again, this is my buddy Tim Hollingsworth recipe. Uh, you probably know him from Netflix. We're going to put a little bit of our twist on it. Um, but his recipe in the Traeger app calls for you to grill this corn for 10 minutes at 450, which is exactly what we've done. It looks awesome. As you can tell, I can tell you it's like totally perfectly tender, so it doesn't get any easier than that. And then we're going to bring in our ingredients. We've got cotija cheese. We've got the juice of one lime. We've got the zest of the same lime. Um, his recipe calls for mayo. I like to add crema, which is Mexican mayonnaise. Uh, we've got some cilantro. We've got some chili powder. And we've got some salt to taste. And normally I add a little bit of our holy voodoo. We're going to put all this together. Uh, I need that red. Where did that go? Looking for our mixing thing. Oh, here it is. Got it. Got it. Got it. We good. OK. Oh, I'm going equal parts. Uh, the recipe here is I'm actually going on this recipe. I'm just adding the crema. So I added equal parts crema that I did the uh, mayo. Uh, zest of the lime. Juice of the lime. Kind of didn't measure my cilantro, so we're going to go with that much. See if I need more. 
Gonna go with uh, most of the cotija and I'm gonna save a little. Yeah, these are half cups. And then I'm gonna add this chili powder. Add a little salt, but look, man, I mean, you gotta, gotta go with your stuff. Let's pop that up a notch. Woo, a little holy voodoo, how much? I don't know. However much you need. Let's mix all that up. So I've got six ears of corn. Uh, you know, adjust this to your crowd. I just made this for Mother's Day. There's options. You could knife this off and you could use the kernels if you don't want to eat it whole. I've got little kids. They like it whole. Who can blame them? All right. Let's get a pretty one. Can you use sour cream instead of mayo? Can you use sour cream instead of mayo? Absolutely. In fact, I like mayonnaise and sour cream. Okay, we're gonna do these real quick like, and about that time, the sauce should be set and we should be in business. What's in your brine mixture? What's in my brine mixture? I kind of covered that at the beginning, but it's a proprietary blend of salt, pepper, the perfect amount of meat church seasonings, uh, and a little bit of stuff that I can't tell you about. But it's a, I'll say this, it's a pretty straightforward brine. It's nothing too crazy. Again, like I said at the beginning, it's not intended, uh, it's not intended to be crazy on the flavor profile. It's meant to give you moisture. So that's, that's our goal with it. Fire off questions while I'm doing this. I already told him that. Oh, you, the question is, did I get a quarantine haircut? Why, yes, I did this week. The mullet was in full effect, so. Best place to probe the chicken. Best place to probe the chicken. Let me show you that in just a second. There's a couple spots, but I'm going to show you my spots here in just a quick second. While you're doing that, how do you, how do you grill the corn, time and temp? How do we grill the corn? This was grilled for 10 minutes at 450 degrees. Uh, you could brush it with a little olive oil. Uh, you could put seasoning on it, and or not, which we did not on this. We just went straight with it. Other ways to cook corn on the cob. Um, this is what I do. I grill, I grill my corn uh, because I try to cook everything outside. So I don't want to boil it in water like my mom did. No offense to my mom. I just try to cook everything outside uh, with fire and smoke. So that's what I do. All right. We're going to a little more cheese, a little excess cheese across the top. Like I said, you eat with your eyes first. Let's make this look pretty. Proud Texans want to know where to find the beef blend pellets. Meat Church Barbecue Supply in Waxhatchee, Texas, uh, one place. Go on, the, go on TraegerGrills.com, click on the dealer locator, see what's nearest you, uh, and then call them and see who's got what you need. Do you ship your seasonings to Canada? Uh, do I ship my seasonings to Canada? Um, yes, we do, but we have a Canadian partner, Dixon Barbecue, DixonBBQ.com. Uh, that we ship by the pallet to. They can get it to you much cheaper than I can. So use them. They're a great Traeger dealer. They host Traeger shop classes. Amazing Traeger partner. Let's check in over here uh, on this chicken. So this is glazing up nicely, but where do I temp chicken? You can temp it in the breast. That's where most people temp it. This is at 110 degrees. Where I like to temp it is right here in the joint of the thigh and the leg. We're at 94, 93. That's usually where I go here. 105 on that one. So those are gonna keep going. You, could, you know, again, if you didn't see the basting, I love to base these with butter, but we're gonna get on to eating these things because what's our time check here? Oh yeah, we're right on time. Let's base these one more time. I'm gonna eat these when we're done. Do you soak the corn? You can, and a lot of people do, but we did not today. Um, and why? So we're cooking in a Traeger, right? There's not a big open flame. You know, I, that's one of the benefits of a Traeger. I love cooking fish on butcher paper. I don't feel the need to soak the corn. This, this corn turned out perfect in 10 minutes, and I never soaked it. 
All right, so that's looking good. So we've basted twice. We're gonna baste one more time. And again, I'll eat that later. Traeger, is this recipe on the site or the Traeger app? It's on both. All the Traeger recipes are in the app and on the site. We all use our phones now, so I only use the app. I, I pretty much don't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the website. I just usually use my app. So, but you can find it on either. We're just kind of whatever you prefer. Okay, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to uh, plate one, and then I'm going to get one out to, to cut. I'm going to put my heat glove set up on again. Because I know this chicken's hot. All right, what do, let's go with this one. Beautiful chicken here. Let's go with this one. Because you can never have enough cheese. I'll make a mess. Okay. This one? My food stylist off camera tell me to spin it. All, all the way? All the way, Corey? So dang picky. I usually use a professional food stylist. At Daydream Workshop, Mandy Tanner, she's amazing, but today I'd have Corey fill in and you see how that's going. Okay. Well, there we have it. I mean, y'all go get me a knife, uh, like a real knife. Uh, I'll grab one. I'll grab one. Hold on. I got one. I ran out of clean knives. Okay, here we go. Gorgeous meal, easy meal, uh, 10 minutes on the corn, hour and a half on the chicken or so. And uh, here we go, the beautiful chicken half. So this works out really good because you, know, you can make an incision here, you can move the thigh, you can remove the thigh and the leg, pop the wing off, you can just eat the breast, whatever you wanna do. Like I said, make this recipe your own. I told you that we could use the voodoo, we use the voodoo seasoning, you could have used the holy gospel. We got lots of others in our arsenal, but uh, you know, Traeger makes great rubs. You might like their pork and poultry rub. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, you know, whatever you guys uh, want to have is, uh, is what I recommend. So just whatever makes you guys happy. But I'm not going to wait much longer. Um, unfortunately, you're not here to see this or to eat this, but I'm going to try it. So I like the dark meat. Um, I will go ahead and uh, show you something. If I pull the skin back, you can see where we seasoned it. Again, the benefit of um, you know seasoning underneath the meat is still pretty hot. But you can see here the succulent white meat and the moisture in there uh, from that brine mixture that penetrated down into the meat. And just to give you guys some examples, still quite hot. Normally I'd be letting this rest uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but Magic TV, I'm gonna be a stunt man. I'm just gonna like jump right in. You know, just kind of whatever, whatever pieces that, uh, that you and your family like to eat or whatever, you know, whatever your favorite is. I told you I like the dark meat, so I'm a, I'm a leg dude. Uh, thighs are good as well, but there's your options. So we've got some, you know, super juicy breast meat, if that's your thing. 
and I'm not doing a good job on that, but that's all right. And it is very hot still. You're gonna need to let this sit 10 or 15 minutes. There's that. Well, here we go. I'm gonna go right in where it's juicy. Mmm, I mean, look how wet that is. Sorry about that. It's okay, it's my meal. That's good. So I get the moisture from the brine. As I'm chewing that, I mean, it's just like, boom, wet, juicy. And that's the thing. The, you know, juicy chicken compared to something you grilled a traditional way that's dry, I mean, there's no turning back. Um, that voodoo flavoring is really coming through. Uh, the heat in it, the jalapeno cooks down. That's not a hot bite. I can't handle hot food, and I, and I love that bite. And it's just, it's just uh, accented by the sauce. So it's not overpowering. It's just on the skin, the glaze that we put on there with the flavors we put together. I mean, it's just like really good. Best seasonings for pork butt. There's nothing like teaching a chicken lesson. The first question is what do you like to put on pork? Um, I use my gospel rub or honey hog rub, uh, Traeger pork and poultry. That, those are kind of my go-tos. Keep the questions coming. Just got a Traeger best tip for a beginner. <laughs> I was told to take uncomfortable bites. Mm. This is good. Let me tell you something. I love Tim Hollingsworth. I guy can cook. Dude worked at the French Laundry for like forever. So you need to try that recipe. Man, that was good. Next question. Cooking my first brisket on Sunday. Any advice? Mm-hmm. Mmm. Ah, that's good. Cooking my first brisket on Sunday. Am I clean? No. That's really good. Man. That's better than the one I made on Sunday. Okay. Am I clean enough? Yes. Bet your first brisket's on Sunday. Go back to the um, Traeger Facebook post from, I don't even know the date, a month ago or so. We did this same thing on brisket. I did a full bore one hour brisket class. Um, my, got brisket, uh, Traeger Fundamentals brisket recipe that I did video that's on YouTube. Um, you can go to the Meat Church YouTube. I've got several brisket recipes. So I got a lot of resources out there. Meatchurch.com has a brisket recipe. A lot, of, a lot of places to show you tips. It's too much to answer in one question. Should I brine if I'm grilling chicken wings? Should I brine if I'm grilling chicken wings? I don't normally, but I know a lot of people that do. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think chicken wings turn into one of those things that I'm trying to eat quick, and so I don't normally brine them, but yeah, you totally should. They're good. Can you or would you ever brine a brisket? Can you or would you ever brine a brisket? Um, I, don't, I don't do that. That's not, I cook a traditional Texas brisket, and we don't do that, so you, know, you can, but it's not something that I do personally. Do you get more smoke flavor on a Traeger at a lower temp? <clears throat> Do you get more smoke flavor on a Traeger at a lower temp? Yeah, obviously, because you get more cook time. Um, but if you go on my YouTube, I've got this video called The Weekday Brisket, and it shows you how I put a brisket on the timberline overnight at 180 or 190 degrees for 12 hours, let it ride half the day like that, cooked basically a 20-hour brisket, and it was unbelievable. So check that out. I'm not just trying to plug my channel, but that was like, we got that question all the time, so on my own I just made this video and it proves that point. Do you ever use Traeger Rub, uh, the Summer Shandy? Do I ever use the summer sh the Traeger uh, Line and Kugel Summer Shandy? Yeah, I like it on chicken, for sure. Sell it in my shop. And the sauce. Can you do chicken with the Texas beef blend? Can you do chicken with the Texas beef blend? Really good question. Um, I, so, all right, in Texas, uh, we use post oak and we season with salt and pepper. That's traditional barbecue. I like to take those flavors and put it on chicken. It's not what you would normally think of on chicken, but if you know going into it, it's going to be a pepper forward bite, you like it. Um, the Texas blend pellets, maybe a little heavy. You obviously could do it. If you use like an oak, a mesquite, a Texas beef, it's going to be smokier. 
Um, and that's okay if that's, you know it's going to be darker and smokier. And if you know that going into it, then you know it, it works. Just kind of what do you want? I mean, I'll talk to you about what's the smokiest so that you would know so you can kind of choose what you like best. What meat church rub is best for ribs? What meat church rub is best for ribs? Uh, Holy Gospel is what uh, Curtis Nations at Traeger and I used on ribs at Memphis in May, uh, final last year, seventh overall. Very good rib rub. It's our Southwestern All Purpose, a little added pepper in it. Uh, it's amazing on, uh, on ribs. But other good ones are Honey Hog, Honey Hog Hot, uh, maybe a little bit of Holy Voodoo. Last question What are you cooking for Traeger Day? What are you and the fam doing? Uh, question, last question was, what are you cooking for Traeger Day? What is uh, uh, myself and the fam doing? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. So uh, I woke up the other day and uh, started thinking, what am I going to do? Am I going to do something epic? I'm always blown away by just pulling up Instagram and looking at what everybody else is doing. Um, I was thinking of doing beef ribs. Um, I've been so lately I've been cooking Doug Shining smoked queso recipe which is on the Traeger app and we've cooked it like five times in a month and so that that was on the menu last weekend probably on the menu next weekend um, I'm not like entirely sure what we're gonna cook uh, just yet so but there'll be something epic going on and I'll put it on our Instagram so I think it was it that was the last question man that hour flew by I was kind of worried thinking that chicken might not take a full hour but uh, I guess time flies when you're having fun so uh, in, in wrap up, you know, you can get this recipe obviously in the Traeger app. You can get it on TraegerGrills.com. Um, you can get the Meat Church stuff at MeatChurch.com. Follow us on Instagram. Um, you know, from there, I remind you guys to come check us out in about an hour. Uh, so it's 6 o'clock Central now. Um, so it's 7 o'clock Central, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Mountain. Is that right? Yeah. 6 o'clock Mountain. 6 o'clock Mountain. Um, we're going to be doing it in an hour from now. We're going to be on Instagram Live with my buddy Tr uh, Chad Ward, uh, Whiskey Bent Barbecue. So we're doing a little, having a cocktail and doing a little recap. So you guys come over there. Uh, you can ask us more questions, be a little more casual, and try to answer as many questions as you guys have. But thank you so much for being, again, you're in my backyard. This is my house. Uh, appreciate you guys spending time with me on this Thursday night. Again, don't forget about Traeger Day on Saturday. All your posts are hashtag Traeger Day. Uh, if you tuned in late, Amazing guests on Saturday at noon Eastern time. Ken Griffey Jr., Thomas Rhett might sing you something. Dan Patrick, uh, Meat Church, I heard he's going to be on there. So you guys tune in. Um, and I didn't fail to mention this. If you like this sauce, the, so the Traeger sauces, rubs, and liners, they're all on sale uh, starting tomorrow for the next three days, 20% off. So check out the website, take advantage of that, and load up. Again, Matt Pittman Meat Church, thank you guys very, very, very much for spending your evening with me, uh, and I hope to see you guys soon. Cheers.